everyone. Welcome to the webinar of CP Bell. There are still some friends join us now. Friends who have joined us, please watch the video of CP Bell introduction firstly. Thank you. Hello, everyone. This is CP Bell Henan office in China, and I'm Freddy, and uh, we are glad to have you join our webinar. Uh, today, the new theme of webinar is new normal of veterinary uh, and the farming practice. Please watch the video of CP Bell introduction. CP Group was established in 1921 and is well known as Charoen Pukathan Group globally. CP Group is a multinational group that focuses on three core businesses, including agri food industry, wholesale and retail distribution, and media and telecommunication. Furthermore, CP Group is also involved in over 10 industries, such as finance, property real estate, pharmaceutical, machinery, and etc. The group business operation covers more than 100 countries and regions worldwide, with approximately 450,000 employees, and achieved a global sales value of 84 billion US dollars in 2021. CP Group has established more than 600 companies in China, with over 90,000 employees. It is one of the modern national enterprises groups with the largest scale of foreign investment and largest investment fails in China. The group business in China includes CP Seeds, CP Feed, CP Bio, CP Food, CP Lotus, and CP Land. CP Bio is a global biotechnology company based on the global practice of CP growth in the agricultural animal husbandry, and food industry chain. We have not only considered the whole industry chain, but also have a deep understanding of consumer demand. The Innovation Center and the Global Marketing Center fully integrate world's excellent resources and bring extensive and large-scale verification of effective products and solutions with all-round collaboration and innovation. CP Bio is committed to using innovative biotechnology to improve animal health, protect the earth, and benefit mankind. CP Bio's subsidiaries include Juma Dian Huajong Chiatai Company Limited, Puchang Chiatai Biochemistry Company Limited, Shandong Chiatai Linghua Biotech Company Limited. Henan Chiatai Biochemistry Trading Company Limited, etc. CP Bio Global Innovation Center follows the 4C R&D concept to create a new pattern and new model for the pioneer product of fermented butyric acid, which is enriching biological health with new energy. We have 142 R&D patents and 265 product approval documents worldwide. CP Bio has an in-depth cooperation with numerous domestic and international professional teams and colleges and industry organizations to focus on the core businesses. We have 750 biological professionals, 210 long-term R&D workers, and the proportion of masters and doctors is as high as 53%. We continue to work with 22 scientific research institutions. We also have roaded 17 scientific research consultant teams around the world in order to realize consumers' demand. Under the conditions of pioneering and innovating with biology and leading the future with professionalism, we create value for all stakeholders. In the field of animal health, we have more than 110 products with chlorotetracycline and fluorophenicol as the core. And in the field of feed additives, we have 10 categories of products that includes induced acid beauty and amino GABA. Meanwhile, in the field of human health, we have more than 10 kinds of probiotic products, such as Life Melody. We have the world's leading production technology chain, automated production equipment, 
the application of digital and intelligent technology and a collaboration with strict production management system and quality management system to ensure that every product delivered to customers has unified standard and higher quality. We cherish the health of every life and the beauty of every life. CP Bio will continue to explore and use innovative biotechnology to improve animal health, protect the earth, and benefit mankind. Hi everyone, I'm Patty. Nice to meet you. And CP Bell, we never stop providing full value service solution to feed veterinary drugs and breed enterprises all over the world. Creating value with technology or solving problem with solutions. Today, we invited Dr. Maita as our keynote speaker. And Dr. Maita is a technical support consultant of CP Bell who is a, a doctor of veterinary medicine from Chala Lungkong University in Thailand. From 1988 to now, more than 30 years experience in Asian animal health industry and worked for Thai food and animal health, uh, health companies like Novartis, Elanco, and Seva and other international animal health companies. We also invited Dr. Liang Chao from Singapore and Dr. Raj from Thailand to discuss the to, to discuss the new norm of veterinary drugs and farming practice. And welcome our friends to this webinar. Any questions, please leave a message below. Uh, our colleagues from CP Bio will contact and reply you uh, at the first time. Uh, now we immediately invited Dr. Meta to share the content of our new new normal of veterinary and farming practice. Uh, Dr. Maita, uh, please. Thank you. I will share my screen. So can you, can everybody see my presentation? Uh, yes, we can see it well. Okay, so I will start right now. Uh, good afternoon from my side, everybody. And also for somebody, it will be good, uh, good morning, yeah. So today we will talk about the new normal of the veterinarian and farming practice. I'm Meta Mekanon from Thailand. The topic of today, we talk about the practice of new normal from the farm practice and the veterinary practice, and then end with the products of the new normal. Start with the practice of the new normal. Farming practice. Now, we can see that it's a changing farm owner a changing mindset of biosecurity from impossible to the must and prove, proven by the ASF control in swine industry that um, have, have a uh, better and better now. And then also they say no for antimicrobial residues because of the customer, I mean, the, cons the so consumer's needs and the commercial and the government restriction. So everybody looking for the ATA or alternative to antimicrobials and looking for the safety administration of antimicrobial. Then also from farms to kitchens to global, Products used in farm need to up standard level because we not only serve our uh, domestic consumption, but we serve for the global consumption. So 
everything needs the global standard certificate, such as ISO, PharmQS, Codec, are required. And agriculture grade also have it, maybe have to change to the feed grade or even the food grade as in the uh, component animal like uh, dogs and cat food. For the farming practice in the uh, topic of biosecurity, you can see that many farm changing mindset from biosecurity uh, to up biosecurity from the impossible to the must. Like ASF in Asia, the transmission in Asia is almost via direct contact or oral route because we have no subtics found in the natural in Southeast Asia. So the up level of biosecurity is control human as is the main carrier, limited times to contact animal, control pests, control food, feed, water in the farm. Uh, this is the, the, the photo of the new farm after the outbreak. Then the new up level about security, the limit times to contact animal, how to do it. First is to avoid worker or human contact to animal, to avoid direct contact or parenteral transmission with the needle and syringes. So many farm practiced by less vaccine in program or less injection. And also promote more water soluble medication. It's common in poultry, but also more difficult in fattening. But the farm, uh, the pig farm have to um, try and try to develop this practice and also promote the combination of the medicine and the vaccine. If you can do both in the same time, they will save the time and also uh, let, uh, decrease the risk to contact animal. Then also it's a great thing of the promote gut health for local system or and systemic immunity. So now new concept of the survive from ASF, less contact, less risk. So avoid the un Necessary contact uh, and necessary contact also need by safety. Like uh, this uh, worker, she have to wear the glove, have to wear the mask when she come inside the breeder house to do some uh, sample collection or even do some feeding. Also reduce some vaccine time and combine piglet vaccine to reduce vaccine time and the uh, Trend of water medication to repress injection for treatment. About the antimicrobial restriction, many say no for antimicrobial residue. So because they have a government restriction in many countries to control antimicrobial in feed and antimicrobial residue in the meat, organs, eggs, and milk, then they have the uh, um, maximum level limited, uh, maximum residue limited concern. So for the MRL or maximum residue limit is the highest level of drug or veterinary medicine, pesticide residue, legally permitted or acceptable in food and animal feed. So now we have to talking about this when we use antimicrobial. So how much and how long. Um, other is the commercial restriction because the, the, we have to sell our products. I mean, uh, pork, uh, chicken, egg, or milk to the consumer. So they not only request about the withdrawal time, but like a uh, Thailand, Thai boilers totally zero antimicrobial for export. Or there are more organic meat, organic eggs, and milk in supermarket. Also, non antimicrobial growth promoter and use alternative to antimicrobial instead. 
in many farm in many country now. And so with and so uh, need veterinarian prescription of antimicrobial in farm. That is the prudent use of antimicrobial. Like this also one of the tests from drug residue test in egg that after uh, have the after have some treatment and we need to check whether which medicine they uh, create the residue in the egg higher than MRL. About the tinkerberry, the tinkerberry from farm to kitchen to global. So not for only local sale, but it's going around the world for some international standard certificate are necessary in the new world, like the ISO or International Organization for Standardization. This is an independent and non-governmental organization that developed the standard to ensure the efficiency, safety, and quality of product, service, and system. We, I think you may uh, uh, feel familiar with the ISO 901, ISO uh, 17025, or ISO 13. 485 or 14001 that about environment. Also about the new about food safety is 22000. This will focus on the develop and uh, implement of the food safety management system. So many ISO and the number of ISO will tell you that what is the standard of that uh, firm, that manufacturing or that farm. Some international standard certificates are necessary in the new world, like a GMP or good manufacturing practice. This is the guideline to provide the minimum requirement that the manufacturer must have and be, be sure that they, their products are consistency high in the quality from batch to batch for the intense use. GMP is for the manufacturing and sales of food and beverage, domestic pharmaceutical products, dietary supplement, and the medical device. So in every part that concern uh, the health of people, health of the consumer. Another one that come with GMP is HACCP, hazard analysis, critical control point. This is a systemic approach to Identification, evaluation, and control of food safety hazard. If somebody come to uh, training about GMP, always has to has to be uh, trained about the HACCB also. Like me, several years ago, I also have to do this to know both because both standards are related. Also. FAMIQS accreditation or feed additive and premature quality system. This also close to us, more close to us because this added the safety, quality, and regulatory compliance of the uh, specialty feed ingredient and their mixture. This is the very, very important thing that uh, mean ingredient and the mixture on soil that they have to control and have the need to certify by the FAMIQS. Another one is the codec elementalist. This is also about the safe food, good food for everyone, everywhere. It's also an international food standard, guideline and course of practice for safety, quality, and the fairness of this international food trade. So you always the, heard the name about codec we would like to add these two code, please, or something like this. Uh, this is one that in Thai market, when I go to the high-end supermarket, we will find the produ product that they produce the value-added product for the consumer. Like this one, only egg, egg with folate, egg with the other, like omega-3, uh, DHA, selenium, 
vitamin E, vitamin A, and leucine, or add with iodine. So this will be added to the products. Then this can this is come from the farm. How you treat animal, and then what that will be uh, become the products that you can sell to the market to the consumer with higher value. For the veterinary practice. Uh, now, veterinarians have to come more concerned for the biosecurity or data role. Many times that I work for more than 10 years to be as the biosecurity auditor, to visit the farm and do the audit every three months, every six months of one farm to, to, uh, to take care about uh, how they do good or not good. Because sometimes the internal person they all check by, by themselves on so, but sometimes because they feel familiar with that practice until they think it, the, the abnormal thing is normal. So it needs somebody outside, then that is the veterinarian work. Another thing is to focus on the health status than disease and treatment. So we need to be a person who can do the serological analysis laboratory user and interpreter. Sometimes we are not the lab people, but we need to know how to use the lab to, uh, to do the, for diagnosis or for the uh, monitoring in the farm. And also we have to do the, to know about appropriate ATA selection because uh, sometimes we need to choose this for the farm. Another is food safety concern. The veterinarian will not, not only concerned about the uh, feed or animal health. This also food safety concern like prudent use of antimicrobial and supportive medicine. We need to also have uh, give, give the veterinary prescription and the carcass and mist inspection also slaughter check. As a veterinarian practice, biosecurity audit, auditor role that I do for many years, for check for the sanitation, check for the pest and fry control in the farm, check for the general health status, and also do the pathogen surveillance. Also, when we do the, we focus on the health status than the disease and treatment, so what we need to do, like we need to know that what is the uh, test kit that can use and have the accuracy. Uh, the accuracy means high sensitivity and also high specs specificity. If it has high specificity only, but not high sensitivity, we also, uh, it very, it very risks to get the uh, fall negative when we have the test then come to the, the some high, high grade, like the uh, real-time PCR that we need to know. So we, we must have the ability, ability to determine the method used for the case analysis, disease by disease. This also, uh, we also need to know that which sample should collect, should be collected and what is the appropriate testing method and interpretation, like a power virus. Um, somebody collect the blood sample of the sow and always find the high title when you check with your HI title, very high title always, but that prove nothing. But the, 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 the one that we need to know, we, we, we need to know it. If the, we found abortion, abort fetus, then we should for, uh, collect the thoracic through it from, from that fetus. And then we can check by HI title. And if it had the high title, so that it means that fetus have some problem of the PPV infection like this, then we can conclude that it have PPV problem in that farm, not, not the sow title. Also, we can see farm status from the serological information. Like, uh, for example, 
PCV2 uh, title when you file the which uh, collect the sample from two weeks old until 20 weeks old of the fat uh, piglet to fattening in the farm. And we check about the uh, SP ratio or the title. And we found they, are, they have some zero conversion or not. And also find the uh, PCR with the DNA of the virus. Uh, if we found this also, it means that it have some problem in the farm. So like this, so this is normal, become the normal work for the, for the veterinarian. Then also veterinary practice need to know the appropriate ATA selection. So now there are several ATA. And the purpose the farm use is to support gut health, immunity, or state control, or and to be you no know, antimicrobial growth promoter. And also they we sometimes we also have to decide how to test is in the farm or the farm practice. Like the now, how why the gut health is important. But for the gut health, it even the gut mucosa, the feed nutrient additive, and the microflora or microbiome. And for the gut mucosa, uh, the mucosal immunity then can uh, can can be can be changed to be the systemic immunity also. And we found that 70% of immune system, it start in the GI tract. So this is very important thing that we need. This we need to uh, support the gut health and we need to know how to select thing that can, the product that can uh, help for the gut health. About the stress also. There are a lot of heat stress in, especially in the tropical zone, uh, like in Asia, in the Southeast Asia. And we need to know about it because heat stress will cause the appetite, drop of appetite, will cause the uh, problem to the GI tract peristalsis and also intestinal structure damage will be higher. We, we reduce the enzyme activity so they will have problem for the appetite and the digestion and also the absorption this also uh, concern to about the glucose transportation in the in the body also. and other nutrient transportation so we also have to manage the history both from management and also both from some product that we can choose For the food safety concern, no, no. Uh, normally now we we not we not do the treatment for our case, so we have to concern about the withdrawal failure of each antimicrobial, and also we not use the antimicrobial in the feed for more, for the like the pig in uh, more than ninety kilogram, or we have to control antimicrobial use as the with, veterinarian prescription that need to declare why, what is the disease happen or what is the pathogen, who, who will handle the treatment, the veterinarian or the assistant of the veterinarian, to whom they need to be treated, which animal, which age, and so what the drug of choice, when, how long of treatment, and how to apply the medicine to target animal, in the feed or injection or water soluble. Then we can come to some products of the new normal. For the new normal products, it have the concept that uh, no more antimicrobial growth promoter. And we need to do the prudent use for antimicrobial, like at least why, what, when, and how what the root or the dose or the withdrawal time. Also, we can have the prophylactic use of the antimicrobial. This is to prevent of disease shedding in unit. Like uh, when you have uh, a group of animals start to have problem in one unit. 
and to prevent the the maybe that is just start with the ten percent of the animal in the in the unit. So to prevent the disease of spreading, sometimes we also need to uh, do some treatment of that group or sometimes have to cover that group, but also the animal that have contact with that group, maybe we also need to do the prophylactic use. So this is um, depend on the situation. Then supporting of the gut health, and I um, ever explained before, this is to provide the balance of the microbiome, like uh, as tell you that. 70% of the immune system are the GI tract, are in the GI tract. Also healthy gut, it means enriched immunity. Uh, the environmental friendly feed additive also is one that many people try to find it. Also supporting of the farm biosecurity focus, uh, like uh, if the pig farm now is focused on the ASF virus. So for the antimicrobial, uh, in general, antimicrobial can uh, help to group. One is antibiotic, and also another is systemic, synthetic antimicrobial. For the synthetic antimicrobial, such as the sulfonamide, fluoroquinolone, hydroxyquinoline, or nitroforan. But in many countries, nitrofuran also stop using. For the antibiotic, it's the antimicrobial that from living organism. It's a big group of antimicrobial, such as the tetracycline group, like a uh, crotetacycline, oxytetacycline, doxycycline, like this, um, beta lactams group, uh, like a amoxicillin, penicillin, or cephalosporin group. Amino uh, is like a gentamycin, ganamycin, or the neomycin in this group. Macrolide also is a, one of the big group that have a tyrosine, tyrosine, tyrosine in this group. Uh, Lincosamide, lincomycin in the group, promotulin or tyrosine, oh sorry, thiamulin and the uh, uh, wanamulin. In the group, polymixin or uh, the cholestine in this group, cholestine is the polymixin E in another words. Wafomycin, phenicol, like a frophenicol, and basitacin. There are so many kinds of uh, antibiotic. For antimicrobial efficacy, all antimicrobial can be uh, separate into classify into and bactericidal effect and the bacteriostatic effect. Bactericidal effect, right, the killing the pathogen. But for bacteriostatic, it stop growing of the pathogen. Growing of the pathogen means it divided into one to two, two to four, four to eight, like this. So in this case, I will BCD for, uh, use BCD for the bactericidal, and also BST is bacteriostatic. Also, antimicrobial can have the uh, divide to time dependent antimicrobial or dose dependent antimicrobial. For the time dependent, it means if you do the more frequency, it will be better. And also for the dose dependent, higher concentration is better. So I will use TD and DD for time dependent and dose dependent. Not all the antimicrobial be time dependent or dose dependent. So we'll talk about this later. For the broad spectrum or the narrow spectrum, and so that the one that we need to concern. Like a first theta cycline group, theta cycline group like crotheta cycline, oxytheta cycline, doxycycline. Uh, it's the bacteriostatic and time dependent and the broad spectrum. Another group is beta lactam. Beta lactam like a penicillin, G, pen V, amoxicillin, ampicillin, or cephalosporin group, right? Cephalexin, septiofer, cephalosin. Uh, this is the bactericidal effect, but time dependent also. 
Some group have narrow spectrum like a PNG, PNV, but some group have broad spectrum like amoxicillin and cephalosporin. Next is amino glycoside. Amino glycoside, gentamicin, ganamicin, or neomycin. This is bactericidal effect on soil. And this is the group, one in the two group of dose dependent. Dose dependent, it mean, it not mean that you can uh, increase dose high and high and high, but normally this group of products, we have the range of dose. So you can use the lower limit or the higher limit of the dose. In case that it is serious case, you can use the higher limit. And, but this group is narrow spectrum. Normally it for the treatment or for control the uh, gram negative bacteria. Macaulay. Macaulay is the uh, bacteriostatic and time dependent and narrow spectrum. This group is a big one of the big group, the, the one that we always use is tyrosine, 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 Josamycin, Gitasamycin, Tulatomycin, or Gametomycin, that is new in the, this, this group. Uh, the next one is Lincosamide. Lincosamide is not the big group. They have uh, Lincomycin and Crindamycin, but normally we use Crindamycin in the human medicine. Uh, this also the bacteriostatic and time dependent and narrow spectrum. For Pulomotilin, this group also not big, not that used in animal is the Thai amulin and vanamulin. It's bacteriostatic also and time dependent. Uh, it have narrow spectrum in the beginning and now it have proved that uh, they expand the, the use for both gram negative and gram positive bacteria and also microplasma and also brachyspira and uh, Lausonia intercellularis. Another fluoroquinolone. This is the antimicrobial because it comes from the synthetic. This is bacterial, bactericidal. And this is also one in two of the dose dependent uh, products and have the broad spectrum. This group in animal that use is uh, endrofoxacin and marbofoxacin now. For the cyprofoxacin and ofoxacin, always used in human. Salmo, salfonamide, uh, like a sulfur, diacin, dimidine, methoxazone, or chlorpyridazine. This is the all bacteriostatic and time dependent with the broad spectrum. Phenical group, like for phenical, time phenical, and column phenical. Normally, column phenical we not use in the food animal. Uh, for the broad, it is, this is the bacteriostatic, time dependent, and broad spectrum. Polymixin group like cholestin and polymixin B, this bactericidal, time dependent, and narrow spectrum, always treatment for the gram negative bacteria. Nitofuran, like fulasolidone, fulatadone, nitofuran twin, this is the bacteriostatic. So, time dependent and broad spectrum, but many countries, this is forbidden to use in the country. Another miscellaneous um, broad spectrum antimicrobial, like a uh, phosphomycin, that is uh, bacteriostatic, uh, battery, uh, battery-sidal effect. Vesitacin also battery-sidal, or halquino, that is the uh, bacteriostatic. So there are many mechanism effect for antimicrobial. This is the cells of the pathogen, like a bacterial cells with the DNA, uh, ribosome, 50S and 30S subunit, and also cytoplasmic membrane, and also the folic acid, uh, metabolism of folic acid producing part, because the in bacteria it cannot uh, eat the folic, folic acid in the feed or outside the body. It had to synthetic by itself. So the first one is the group that inhibits cell wall synthesis. 
So this group is vancomycin, bezitacin, penicillin, cephalosporin, and cephamycin. This is for the synthesis. And another is inhibit cell wall integrity, like a bactalic dam, uh, amoxicillin, and amoxicillin carbolanic. And the uh, other group is the inhibit DNA synthesis, like a metonidazone, inhibit DNA gyrase, like a quinolone, polyquinolone, and inhibit RNA polymerase, like lamfabicin or haquinone. Inhibit the folic acid metabolism, like a sulfur and trimethoprim. Inhibit cytoplasmic membrane with polymyxin, like a polystin. The big two big group that important inhibit protein synthesis at the 50th ribosome is macrolide group, vincosamide, chromutrin, columphenicol, and the group of 30s. Uh, Ribosome inhibit protein synthesis at 30s ribosome, like a data cycling group, amino glycosides, steptomycin, spectinomycin. I think many people can heard the name lincospectin, lincomycin and spectinomycin. Why it can use together? Normally, normally when some medicine that need to combine, we can need we can combine the uh, group that inhibit protein synthesis of 50S ribosome and 30S ribosome together that can have the synthetic effect, like a lincospectin, like a thiamulin and data cycling. For the administration of medicine, first we have, we can use injection, water medication and the feed medication. For the feed medication is the easy and the convenient and used for the big group of animal or the whole house treatment. And is we need to concern that use when feed intake is okay or not reduce less than 20%. For the water soluble, this is also fast and specific one for the uh, large, medium, and small group treatment. And animal uh, need to concern about the animal that can, it, it can, they can uh, still can drink water. And also we need to have the proper equipment like a dosaton or the mixing well and the good water quality. And injection, injection is fast and specific. It's an individual treatment, but it costs more work and animal contact. So in some case, like a, now, like a ASF happen or some outbreak of the disease, the injection also have to be reduced or controlled. Some survival disease and hand on with prudent and prophylactic use. This is uh, the thing that I would like to show you the sample, the example that we do in the practice in the field. Like uh, in winning and nursery, uh, we can help PRS virus during winning and nursery with the fever, hydro, conjunctivitis with the eye discharge around the eye, have rubber beating, and many secondary infection with the bacteria. So what we can do from this group, we can do something like T or treatment, P prophylactic. Treatment, uh, first management, it provide a warm area for pigment and sow. Then for treatment, you can use the water medication for the clinical at uh, five to four to seven days with some support tea. Uh, support it like a water, one liter, plus the sugar, six teaspoon, and salt, 0 0.5 teaspoon. This is come from the FAO suggestion. And uh, Tivalosine, you can do that. Tivalosine plus CTC or paradoxycycline like this. For the feed medication in the group, uh, the pig that in the same group, uh, we can do the feed medication for, for, for prophylactics treatment. This is the, like thymulin or tivalosine plus the cortetacycline. Or oh, when you found the problem of the PCV2, 
with the PMWS or PDNS, like this sucking piglet that have the clinical side of the viral disease with the edema of the eyelid, conjunctivitis with the ID chart around the eye, nursery and fattening and breeder have the PDNS or red purple, purple on the skin and not growth or slow growth. Also, hand cause the reproductive problem with the stillbirth abortion in every step and have a regular small little size. And we also can file PDNS in both with the edema of epididymis part that can cause the shedding of the virus via the semen. So what to do? First, you know that it, it, have, it is the virus that also can have the vaccination. So you can use vaccine of PCV2 in breeder and also in piglet. And then you do the treatment. Treatment, this is for control secondary infection. Uh, you feed medication for the breeder with thymoline, tivalosine, and plus CTC. This is for example. Also for prophylactic in the, the winning piglet. And in the, after they win for five days, this is the, you can use support tea with water, sugar, and salt with the water soluble medication like the tivalosine plus CTC or doxycycline. This is for example, and what I always use in the farm. Another disease like bacteria like a microplasma, Ionimoniae, that cause dry coughing and poor performance in the fattening and also at the at the slaughterhouse, you can see the uh, we call lung consolidation and clinical ventral pneumonia like this and the chronic form or the acute form. And so when you do necropsy in the fattening in the farm, you can so can find mycoplasma hyonemonia. Like this one, I found two mycoplasma in one case. Other is mycoplasma hyorhinis. This also causes the problem of the swelling joint, lameness, uh, reluctance to move, coughing, dyspnea, fever, mostly in the uh, winning peak around three to 10 weeks of age. That like this one, many farm that uh, got the mycoplasma hyorhinis before arthritis and synovitis. And peak also uh, walk in the, we call stick nets. Like this. This is no treatment until come to be the starter peak. So the problem is more and more problem because some pig also cannot walk and make the ADG drop because the feed intake drop also. So the, the, the fast of treatment, like a treatment scene, they are the young piglet that will be helpful for this case of mycoplasma hyorhinis. Other microplasma, like microplasma, I also know why. That is uh, cause the arthritis in the bigger pig. Normally, the pig that um, older than 12 weeks of, the, of uh, age. But also, this also can have consequence in the breeder unit, especially for the guilt replacement. Many times in the gill replacement unit, you can see it sitting on the dirty floor. And then the, the, uh, there can have some bacteria that contaminate, go to the reproductive tract and cause the, the mastitis or metitis before, before the, the first service, the first mating in the guilt. So, and, and like this case, I found a lot of uh, problem of the dog sitting posture of the gills and also for the uh, bacteria that cause the metitis is already some contaminant bacteria like E. coli, staphylococcus. 
for the mycoplasma, we, uh, as I do many research about this, also found that uh, in 2000, uh, many years ago, like 2009, the MIC of mycoplasma is really low. But in the year like uh, 2020, it's higher in some medicine, but also uh, in many medicine, but, also, like, but still have the uh, good medicine for mycoplasma like high pneumonia, thiamulin, and also tivolosin. Tivolosin is good for MIC 50 not the MIC-90, and so we, we have to choose which one that we use. Not only mycoplasma high o pneumonia, mycoplasma high o rhinis, also one of the most important, like especially for the piglet. And uh, several years ago, it can be used, uh, can use many kind of antimicrobial, but right now, uh, thiamolin seems to be the best one. For microplasma, I O C N O A. Um, this one right now, tivolosin and also thiamulin is the lowest for the MIC fifty and MIC ninety. So, how to handle three microplasma? The water medication for the young pig, as I told you that to treatment before uh, the disease is increase and the, it's spreading the disease to other pig in the same house. This is uh, for water medication of the young pig after weaning around three to weeks of age. Oh, in the clinical case, you can use thymolin at the 10 milligram per kilo body weight for three days or tivolosin five milligram per kilo body weight, five days. Or doxycycline 10 milligram per kilo body weight, three to five days. This also can be used. And for the lactating sound, this also needs to control mycoplasma because the mycoplasma can transmit from sow to piglet during the, lactate, during the lactating time. Because this is not vertical transmission uh, by the weird tan placenta, it's not tan placenta, but it via the direct contact and also the nose still of sow nose to nose from sow to the offspring. So we can use the feed medication in the sow seven days before and after farrowing. Uh, the feed medication that normal commonly used for control microplasma, you can use thymolin or tivolosin at 150 ppm with CTC, 450 ppm, seven days before and after farrowing. Injection, this is for the clinical case in case that you have a lot of uh, coughing, a lot of uh, arthritis, and you can separate that group of the animal. You can use the, as I found in the market now, the two medicine that are still effi have uh, high efficacy for mycoplasma, marbofoxacin injection and thymolin injection. Another mycoplasma, is microplasma suis. Its former name is Iperitosun suis. So if we, we call Iperitosun suis, maybe you will feel more, feel more familiar. But now it's microplasma because this is the one of the bacteria that doesn't have the cell wall like a microplasma. So this is the new cluster in genus microplasma with hemotropic microplasma got it eat the blood. This is where it contact to the red blood cell, stay in the surface or go, go inside the, the red blood cell and then make the red blood cell break. So in severe infection, it can cause hemolytic anemia and cause a high mortality, especially in the piglet, in the nursery pig. In the mild infection, it can cause chronic anemia with the infertility in breeder, immune suppress, or some more disease susceptibility. This transmission by the direct contact and so by the infected blood. So if the blood from the infected animal go to, uh, to the other, another animal, it can transmit. Or you can go with the mechanism like you, the same needle, or have insect bite. This also have the um, 
incident that they have can have time placenta. So the sound with the mycoplasma so is in the blood and transmit this to the fetus. This also help the, the evidence of zoonosis because uh, they uh, they can detect the anti antibody of this this of uh, mycoplasma so is in the worker in the farm that infect high infection with mycoplasma so is. So this is how it look like. The clinical side, not only the pale or yellow skin, but they also can have the ear and tail necrosis. This is the necrosis. Um, this is not after the, the ear or tail biting because it's no breathing. It necrosis because the, the collapse of the, of the uh, waist, uh, blood vessel at the extremity part of the body, like, uh, like the, the pinna, the ear, and also like the end of the tail, like this. And the predisposing cause is overcrowding. When you do overcrowding uh, in, in, in the house, too much people pain at the late nursery to start. Also, in the cold weather, it can have more incident in than in the hot weather because of the in the cold weather and so they are they they uh, the the extremity of the body is cool and so the they can be the predisposing cause for the ear and tail necrosis also. the because this is one of the disease that very difficult to do the research because it can we cannot grow mycoplasma so is in vitro for in vitro study. So it kept to do only in vitro in vivo study. So the only information that we have now is that uh, cortetacycrine and the oxytetacycrine are the only medicine that recommend for the control and treatment of mycoplasma so is. So we can treat it by the feed medication with the CTC 600 ppm for one month in gestation in case that you found the infection or you can check the uh, mycoplasma so is on the blood. Then also for the CTC water medication, the dose is 40 milligram per kilo body weight for 14 days. Atom Bacterial disease is the APP that uh, form actinobacillus pulo pneumoniae. So they can cause pleural pneumonia in animal. Some that have the severe infirm, um, severe serotype, you can uh, find the sudden death of the blood from more nose, from nose and the mouth. But also if you cause some chronic disease, you can find the uh, Pura adhere to the rib by this. In case that you found this one, the, the treatment maybe still can work, but this is, uh, if you found this in the, uh, in the shelter house already, so it means that too late. The this is already gone. Another is streptococcus is infection. This is the gram-positive bacteria, but very really important in the pig farm. It causes pruritis, peritonitis, meningitis, arthritis, and be careful is zoonosis that can cause the, the death to the people. Uh, in the farm that we visit, it convulsion in the starter pig that just moved from the nursery part to the fattening unit. This is the, what happened to, to the pig that it have the convulsion like this. And after this convulsion, it dead. After this, uh, when you, you found convulsion, it cannot breathe on soul and quarters. Uh, the chain of the snouts, color, uh, that is like a cyanosis. Another one that when we do in the 
outside clinical sign is the arthritis. In case of arthritis here, when we touch it, it hard because it have inflammation, it have uh, uh, pass on this inside. So it is uh, swelling hot and hard. It's purulent arthritis. And another typical uh, clinical, uh, clinical typical lesion is the vegetative valvular endocarditis. This, this it happened in the, some farm that after we draw the antibiotic, uh, antimicrobial to the farm, but the disease is still, but they withdraw. So the disease uh, happened, uh, uh, caused the death in the piglet. And when we do the necropsy and we found uh, which is that well, endocarditis. Other is the pressure disease. Right now, uh, normally we know that it's a uh, hemophilus palasso is, but uh, now it changed the name to Gracilella palasso is. So I will, um, I, I always uh, write the short name as G and P. So the, it's a gram negative bacteria that cause arthritis, long and love head cold with the respiratory disease after winning. This also can have uh, pulitis like this, polytonitis and so, uh, with the purulent arthritis. This is very similar to streptococcus is. Other bacteria that we also found, especially in the slaughterhouse, or this means that in the fattening unit, is the Pachulella motosida type A infection that cause pneumonia, fever, coughing, and the nasal discharge. And we found pulitis and the exudative pneumonia. So these are the bacteria that we are include in PRDC. So the hand on this, first we can use the water medication after winning or during nursery in the young piglet and do the feed medication for nursery or starter grower pig. Do injection for the pig that cast clinical sign and cannot eat or drink. Uh, some vaccine also had, can can we have some vaccine for some disease. So we can use some vaccine like a mycoplasma, hypopneumonia vaccine or the APP vaccine for the nursery before injection or in some vaccine that can apply for the sow and gill to make the breeder have the immunity to transmit this to its offspring. Water medication for a case of PRDC uh, is, uh, you can use the CTC Tivalosin for five days, or feed medication with CTC Tivalosin, Thiamulin, or Tumicosin, or Cofenicol. This is one of the drug of choice that can use. Also for injection, marbofoxacin or androfoxacin that can, can be used. Then we come to the enteric disease. The first one that we always found is a colitis and so I this enteric. This uh, caused, the, caused by the brachyspira hyodis enteric that is uh, caused mucohemologic diarrhea or dysentery. Another is brachyspira pilosicoli that cause water semen like diarrhea. We always call this is colitis. So this is the so I dysentery that we found. And this is a colitis case. Other is eyelitis. Eyelitis sometimes we call the PPE or PIA. It's a porcine proliferative enteropathy or porcine intestinal adenomatosis that we call this, uh, this clinical sign in the starter or grower. But in the finisher gill or breeder, it changed to be the PHE, proliferative hemorrhagic enteropathy. Why? Because the clinical sign is different. Even it comes from uh, Lausone intercellularly, it's the same bacteria. For PIA, they just uh, have the watery diarrhea like this, pig not die, but not growth. But in case of PHE in the bigger pig, it can cause the uh, hemorrhagic diarrhea. 
and the blood clot on the ileum, also the early part of the colon. Like this can cause sudden death in the breeder when I do necropsy, no blood on the stomach. So this is not graphic ulcer, but we found the blood clot in the, in the uh, ileum and also in some parts of the colon. So for this case, for the case treatment of this century, PIA and PHE, what we can do? For the feed medication, drug of choice is thiamurin 150 to 200 ppm for 14 days, or Thailand tyrosine 110 ppm for 21 days, tiwalosine also 200 ppm for 14 days, or CTC 450 to 600 ppm for 14 days. For bottle medication, you can use for seven days. The drug of choice can be CTC, tyrosine, tiwalosine, or thiamurin. And the injection, you can use thiamurin injection. Other enteric disease, it is protozoa that called Barantidium species, somebody called Barantidium coli, or Barantidium suis. Barantidium species is protozoa that cause the watery diarrhea in human and also in the pig, pig as a reservoir. And it transmit by ingestion of the seeds form like this. This form is occur in the feces of the animal or the human. And then if this, this is, uh, you, you eat this seeds, uh, you, you eat the seed form, then our animal uh, feed the seed form, then can have the problem of the balantidium coli. Uh, so the transmission can be from sow to piglet at the farrowing like this one. It's the case that I found in Vietnam. Uh, when they found that there are a lot of piglet that have the uh, semen or gray color, watery diarrhea. It's not like normal piglet in the lactating unit that normally they, if they infect with salmonella or E. coli, their feces should be in yellow color or green color, but this in uh, dark, dark gray color. So I checked the piglet and also check the sow feces uh, with the fresh smear. And then we found the seeds of the Balantidium coli, a lot of feces. But normally it will be, if there are the pig diarrhea from Balantidium coli, the watery diarrhea will, uh, will have a lot of toposoy. And then when toposoy st uh, stay around one or two hours in the environment, then we just change to cyst form. Like this one, in the uh, spiral colon, you can see that there are many um, micro abscess like this, when we do necropsy and we find a lot of abscess inside. And I ever run the uh, histopathology called test with H and E stain, and we found many of the uh, Balladidium coli cells inside. And this is the, the watery diary. And the tofosoy, how it look like when it, it can move because it have the cilia. And it can move when you use the fresh smear like this. This is the tofosoy that nearly to be the cyst form. You can see the it have the it have the uh, cilia around the cells. It's called diarrhea and normal antibiotic cannot be used for the treatment. You cannot use cholestin, neomycin or some normal antibiotic because this is the protozoa. So you should have something that's specific to protozoa. So for the treatment of Barantidium coli, for the feed medication, Normally, it comes from sow to piglet at the lactating at the lactating barn. So, in lactating sow, you can give the medicine in the feed for fourteen days with the CTC feed grade six hundred ppm or Hawquino one hundred eighty to two hundred forty ppm. In nursery to fattening, also can use CTC and Hawquino. 
but for water medication, only CTC that can use uh, because Hakuino is not uh, water soluble. Other new normal product that we can use. Uh, first is disinfectant or antiseptic. This uh, expect based in class product for the both efficacy and safety to animal and human. Because normally we use by spraying or it touch the, the human skin or animal skin also. The one that really popular is the sub group of oxidizing agent. Uh, like we use hydrogen peroxide, we use the plastic acid, potassium hydrogen sulfate complex powder, or sodium dichloroisocyanulate, or you can use uh, for fumigation and gap form as well as the water soluble, as this is a lot of uh, pig farm uses. And do water treatment to kill ASF or bacteria in drinking water or using water, provide product and solution. We need to do it, how to use it, and with the scientific proving. For product that's supporting the gut health, normally it can be probiotic, that it good microorganism. Normally you found lactobacillus, bacillus, that this is no colonization in the gut. So you have to give it you routinely every day, every day. Then another is prebiotic, it's the nutrient of microbiome or probiotic. So it can be oligosaccharide, uh, it can be uh, fiber or non-starch polysaccharide, it can be other nu nutrient. Symbiotic, sometimes they do, uh, put together with the pre and probiotic. And another is postbiotic. Postbiotic is the metabolite of the probiotic or microbiome, like the organic acid, lactic acid, or chachin fatty acid, acid uh, compound of the acetic acid, propionate or butyrate. Other feed additive that can provide uh, loan or the mixing with other ATA for more efficiency, like a plant extract that will mean many country that use more and more because this is have the ATA property for the treatment of some in infection, both AI and systemic disease, like the organo essential oil that contain our call thymol phenolic isomer. The plant extract uh, supplement, as the supplement, like the uh, have uh, a catechin, uh, that is the flavonoid from the tea polyphenol. It can be antioxidant, inhibit uh, uh or methyl transferase to stimulate the metabolism of the energy or gut microbiome balancer or GI tract protector, that redu uh, reduction of the pathogen organism virulence, like uh, use the short chain fatty acid, uh, medium chain fatty acid, or GABA or monocrystalline, something like that, or use the lysozyme as the natural product form, that is natural product form, the eight albumin, these have the antimicrobial, this is antimicrobial enzyme, that targeting at the bacterial cells wall. Again, this can provide alone or mixing with other in the group for more efficiency. Then I talk alone <laughs> for then come to be a take home message that we need to live in, in the new normal. So we have to do the prudent use of antimicrobial for treatment of for, for, for the prophylactics of course. We have to trialing the environment friendly fit attitude in our firm, in our farm. We have to learn learning by doing the different technique for up level the biosecurity and the new normal of today, maybe not be new normal for tomorrow. So it means that everything is new for the tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Thank you.
Thanks, Dr. Matter, for your speech. Um, some well, some friends want to know more information about our new normal of veterinary drugs in poultry and uh, ruminant animals. Okay. So, uh, because I'm uh, work in the part of swine more than poultry and ruminant, but so I can give some uh, suggestion, like uh, for poultry, uh, in some country that poultry for export, you have to zero microbial for the for the uh, for the chicken meat type. But anyway, there are also some antimicrobial that you can use with the uh, with the water, but only with the water like a uh, called theta cycrine as the theta cycrine group as I ever found. Uh, theta cycrine group with called theta cycrine or doxycycrine. This is in the mid type or some in case of the layer, in case of the layer also can use the group of the theta cycrine also. Or sometime if the, this is the uh, layer breeder or the breeder group, uh, thiamulin also need because you also have to control MTMS problem, thiamulin or tualosin that you can use to control MTMS in that case. Uh, however, in like theta secret group, some if you would like to use in the layer part, some theta secret have a residue very high residue in the in the egg, especially for the doxycycline. So you also have to be careful when you use doxycycline in layer. Maybe you can choose the theta secret instead. For for the ruminant. Ruminant normally, because this is the, uh, they have rumen and they have the microbiome, really high microbiome to use for the digestion. So the ruminant, the, the adults ruminant, normally we not put antimicrobial uh, for, for in the feed or for water soluble because it will have the problem with this. Normally we do the local treatment like it have MMA, then we give the antimicrobial injection at the other, like this. But also normally we use the antimicrobial for control the, the in the feed for the young ruminant, that means the calf before weaning when they have problem of the diarrhea. So also, again, normally product that use is a group of the beta cycling that can use for the for, for this this case but and also some uh, antimicrobial that you can see in the label yeah. thanks dr matter and at the same time we have uh, we uh, our friend have some pro have some questions at our q and a q and a interactive window you can okay. answer the question online uh what is the ideal ph of water for water medication more effectively, okay? Ah, no, this is a good question, a good question because I would like to answer not only pH, to use the water solvent or water medication. First, pH need to be, should be in the uh, neutral pH or around seven, not, not, to, not to be a uh, high pH, at the alkaline, high alkalinity, or not, not to be lower pH because uh, from some medicine, it will reduce the problem, reduce its efficacy very fast when the pH change. But the second thing is the hardness of the water. You need to check that the water need to be not have a high hardness because in many case of uh, antimicrobial water soluble, in case of the hardness, as uh, I ever found the case of Thai Amurin water soluble in India, in the area of the uh, high hardness area, or in Taiwan with the high hardness in the water, the treatment is not good at that time. It's not because of the medicine, but it's because of the quality of the water that used. Okay, okay. Thank you, Dr. Mehta. And uh, there are still three uh, questions. Uh, uh, for example, the first day, uh, a friend asked, have you tried the ketamine? 
It is also has good make in micro microplasma cases. Uh, the, what? Uh, could, in the, the, could you repeat the question to me again? Sorry. Okay. Have you tried the ketamycin? It is also oh. as good max in microplasma cases. It is a good ketamycin, in, yeah. Uh, okay. uh, ketamycin is one of very old medicine. And I ever do the MIC test of ketamycin to all kind of microplasma, both in poultry and in, in swine. In Thailand before, but this is not published. This is not published during I do work on the lab and I found the result is not so good. This is why I not, not recommend this. And there are a lot of medicine, uh, it, there are a lot of medicine that can use for microplasma, both in poultry and also in pig. So uh, the one that I, I uh, present is the one that normally we use, thiamulin, tewalosin, Doxycycline is one of the main products that used in case of microplasma, both in poultry and also in the pig. Uh, yeah, yeah, in poultry and pig. Yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, and another question is about uh, poultry. Uh, the second question is uh, if a poultry flock is not show positive for microplasma infection, then is it effective to use tyrosin? or tamulin as a pre preventive? If you, uh, you mean that if you don't follow the clinical side of it, like in case that you don't follow the clinical side, but you are not sure that it have the problem of microplasma or not, I recommend that you should do some palatized swab uh uh do the swap from the, the volatile part of the the poultry then you can make sure that it have mycoplasma or not but in case that for the history of your farm or the your breeder breeder of poultry have uh, ever have mycoplasma MD or ms before so maybe you also need to do some uh, support treatment in some time some period that are the risk time, right? The time of the like this rainy season, mycoplasma very light. It, it, it always have the problem. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I think so, this is the last one, and uh, the question is which is more effective for use any antibiotic, for example, tyrosine or timely in the feed or in drink water treatment, what is more effective for use in the drink and water treatment? This question, please. For, for, which, anim, for which disease? This is depend on which disease. Uh, like uh, if you have the, the problem of the uh, brachyspira problem, like uh, enteric disease that called the di uh, dysentery or I like this, colitis, tyrosine or thiamulin have the nearly the same uh, efficacy. And for feed or water sorbo, water sorbo is more effective because in all any in all medicine, because the, the, the animal can absorb the water sorbo better than for the feed. This is the one. But in case that you have some uh, respiratory disease, like mycoplasma, ATP, or some PRDC, maybe thiamulin is better than tyrosine in that case. Also, again, you better use the water sorbo than in the feed. But also, if you would like to use some prophylactic treatment for the hive, uh, the for other, uh, for the big flock, and animals still can eat the feed then you also can put the feed uh, medication also. Thanks, Dr. Maita. Uh, then we welcome other consultants to give their uh, comments on this topic. Dr. Liang, please. Yes. Hi, Dr. Maita. 
Thank you Hi. very much for the nice uh, presentation today. I would like to have a question regarding this uh, watery uh, diarrhea. Can you explain a little bit more? Because you uh, definitely you uh, explain a lot, but I would like to hear more. And uh, also, my particular question is regarding the CDC's use for the watery uh, diarrhea. So is there any particular reason for use CDC to stop watery diarrhea? Thank you, Dr. Liam. Um, watery diarrhea that you, 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 you asked me, you mean that from Balantidium chloride, like the Botosua, that cause yes. watery diarrhea. Yes. Yes. This is the case that in Southeast Asia we found a lot, in Southeast Asia. In Vietnam, in Thailand, in Indonesia, in Philippines, I always found this case. And uh, the, the proto, this protosua is uh, like, as I told you, it comes from cis form, that you eat the cis form in the, in the body, and it grow in the colon part, and then cause a lot of tophosoids, and also make the, uh, the gut have some contraction and with the painful and animal also have the watery diarrhea at that time with a lot of tofu soy in the in the, in the feces that we can detect it by the fresh smear. Fresh smear is that you just collect the feces and put in the cover uh, the slide just one drop and use the uh, clean and clean water one drop mix it together cover with the cover gas then you can use the light microscope. Uh, with the IPs allow four to ten, that is very big. You just can detect it, and because this is the zoonosis, because uh, mainly it the animal animal disease, uh, human disease in the South Asia like uh, uh, Pakistan, Bangladesh, India. There are a lot of people that infect with this disease. So I uh, normally. The duck of choy that use the hapquino, that it proved for the but uh, chloride, but for the human, human don't use hapquino. So I check with the treatment that human doctor use for the treatment. They use CTC. They use theta secrine group. So this is why I select the CTC and then after I use it in the pig farm. Normally we can use the sometime in the in the certain like a emergency case and we cannot uh, mix it in the feed from the factory. So we need to do the uh, top dressing on the farm. So CTC like CTC feed grade is more convenient and we use it around 600 ppm at can, do, can, uh, can, can, can success for the treatment. But for the human, they use the uh, theta secrine group at 40 milligram per kilo body weight. So this is why it, this is the dose that I bring to use in animal also. Okay, thank you very much. Because this is just my uh, assumption, because uh, in China, uh, in south part of China, like uh, Highland Island, like uh, Guangdong, Guangxi, and uh, Yunnan, etc., the climate could be very similar, like uh, Southeast Asia. So I think if this application uh, used is uh, proven and is uh, successful, definitely it will help uh, CDC cells in China as well. Okay. Yeah. So I agree with you that uh, in human, uh, not for the diarrhea, uh, watery diarrhea, but uh, I remember my son when he go to the national service. In, uh, in Singapore. So when they, uh, how to say, need like a three days or three weeks campaign uh, in outside because uh, afraid of uh, Maria infection. So uh, all the uh, kids, all the army take this uh, toxicycline, you know, so for, for the medication or for the preventive a purpose, just not for bacteria infection, but for 
uh, this Zulist, you know, the Maria infection. So I'm very much uh, curious. So I did check it up. So that's by then I was wondering uh, if doxycycline uh, can be used, but the uh, CDC definitely can be used. So today I'm very glad you made that, uh, uh, you know, move or decision already and uh, very successful. Thank you very much. So I will uh, talk about this uh, to the China team, the CDC team about this, because yeah. definitely not every veterinarians uh, are aware of, of this particular application. But uh, at the meantime, uh, if you have any more uh, technical uh, papers regarding watery diarrhea or this uh, CDC application for treatment of watery diarrhea, please send it to me. Thank you very much. Yeah, I will send to you. And also yeah. I agree with you about the South of China because uh, I ever uh, have the routine farm visit in Guangxi, Guangdong also. And when do necropsy, we found uh, a lot of the um, micro abscess on the okay. on the rec, on the uh, on the colon side, but okay. at that cost, there are no uh, uh, light microscope that can can use. Them. So this is why I just guess that it have problem also. Yeah, definitely, it will be very much helpful for for CDC cells in China. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, thanks. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Liang and Dr. Meta. Uh, and please, Dr. Meta, they ask you some questions from our friends. Uh, for example, firstly, uh, uh, a friend asked, uh, is niomycin can be combined with lincomycin to increase the spectrum of drug? Uh, and, and, and which, which, which could you repeat the, the name of medicine again? Is niomycin can be combined with lincomycin to increase the spectrum of drug? Lincomycin and, and what? So sorry, I, I cannot. To increase spectrum of drug. Which, which, uh, which, 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 lincomycin and what product, what, now? Uh? Could, could you repeat again the name the, the mm -hmm. name of the uh, medicine that is not lincomycin? Lin another medicine. What is the name? Uh, is the is the niomycin can be combined? Neomycin. Okay. Uh, neomycin. Neomycin can can be combined with lincomycin to increase spectrum of drug. Okay. Okay. Um. Normally, normally we not use uh, it depends because neomycin, if you use because neomycin is in the amino glycoside group, this is not absorbed via the gut. So if you eat, give the oral route, right, the water solvent or the feed medication, neomycin will stay only in the gut, not go inside the body. Not like in lincomycin. Lincomycin can can uh, absorb to the systemic, to the lung, and to the another. So, in the case that you would like to uh, use for use lincomycin for the treatment of respiratory disease by use oral medication, then lincomycin will not help you. But you can use lincomycin plus the CTC that will be better because CTC can absorb via the gut. And also because CTC is focused on the control, um, the protein synthesis at ribosome 30S and lincomycin control at the 50S. When you combine this together, that will be have synergistic effect. But for neomycin in this case, it's not, but also, in case that you would like to do the treatment of the, the, uh, the enteric disease only, or maybe you use lincomycin and, and neomycin, it can be. But anyway, 
because neomycin is bactericidal effect and lincomycin is bacteriostatic effect. Normally, in theory, in theory, bacteria we not use bactericidal and bacteriostatic together because it can have the antagonistic effect. Okay, okay, Dr. Meta, thank you. Uh, and another question uh, is for uh, the regulatory. Uh, the, the, the friend asked which regulatory guideline is to be followed uh, in your, your mission, the, in your mission the presentation today. Um, the, the guideline is depend on each market, each country. Because the government, like normally livestock department or the FDA of each country, they will have the regulation for your country. Like I am in Thailand, the uh, livestock department not allowed to use antimicrobial for the or the uh, uh, poultry for export. So they not allowed to use. We have to do silo antimicrobial. In case of the pig, they also not allowed to use the antimicrobial in commercial feed for the pig that more than 90 kilogram. That is the regulation of the country. But for the standards, standard regulation, also normally the factory should have GMP, HSCCP, the factory that produce the medicine or produce the feed additive. You should have GMP and HACCP. And the product itself should have the certified with FAMIQS. And also the, the production, the production the, uh, should have ISO. So the one that I, I bring to, to, to show you is the common uh, certified that requested by the consumer. Okay. Okay. Thank you. MP, HACCP, FAMIQS, ISO. Okay. Thank you. And uh, I think you, your answer will will satisfy all of our friends. And uh, uh, if our friend has uh, more questions, uh, you can ask. You can ask in the uh, in the Q and A. Okay. Due to time constraints, if you have any question, please leave the message or contact us through the LinkedIn platform or our official website of CP Bell. Okay, I think uh, I think uh, uh, if more questions, we can we can we can chat online and uh, in another platform or by by our email uh, and. Uh, uh, okay, our friends. Uh, if you have, uh, if you have uh, uh, the questions, you can also contact uh, uh, our uh, web website. And uh, after our this meeting, uh, there will be a questionnaire, and uh, and uh, I hope uh, we can get you help to fill it. Um, okay. Uh, the meeting is uh, is all all right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's our thanks for our friends' support and uh, and your uh, part uh, participation. Uh, and that, that's how. It, that's looking mm -hmm. after to look up, uh, look forward to the next webinar of CP Bell. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye bye. Have a nice day. Thank you.